Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a spiral muck dye. You want to start by turning your project inside out. If you don't want to, you don't have to. It's whatever you want to do. Decide where you want the center of your spiral to be. Give it a little pinch. And then for this one, I'm going to be using the splatter guard that I got off of Amazon. And I highly recommend it. It really does make spirals a lot easier to make. They're the closest thing to a pleated spiral without actually making a pleated spiral. So I have a link for it down below in the description box. So then I take my hemostat and I give it a clamp on the first you know, clip. It doesn't have to be so tight because you don't need to rip a hole in the center of your shirt. And if you notice, I'm using my one hand to hold the hemostat, but I'm actually creating the spiral with my other hand, working on those pleats. Um, and I wanna point out, you guys, I unclamp the hemostat before removing it from the shirt. Um, I do it quickly and I do it one-handed. Uh, I am trained to use hemostats, so it comes very easily for me, so I do it quickly. So uh, rewind it and look again if you don't believe me. I do unclamp my hemostat. You certainly don't want to rip it out of your shirt because, yeah, you're going to poke a hole in your shirt. Plus, you're going to pull the whole spiral up with it and you're going to end up doing it again. And once it's spiraled, you want to secure it by using rubber bands or kite string, whichever you prefer. So while I'm securing my spiral, I like to tuck in all the loose tails, so I pull them to the nearest rubber band. That way it creates a nice tight spiral. Also, I try to have my rubber bands intersect in the center of the spiral. That's not a necessary step, but it does help um, when deciding like the pieces of the pie to add the die. Um, the, the rubber bands could be going all different directions, the kite string, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just it is helpful for the eye. Isn't that such a good looking spiral? And it was relatively quick and easy. So the next step is to find a container for your muck dye. And you want your container to be similar in size of your project because you want that muck water to surround your project. If you were to put it into a humongous tote, all that water would displace and you really do need that muck dye to be around your project. So I got these bowls at the Dollar Tree and they're perfect for this size spiral. And then just take your washable marker and mark out your pattern. Again, it's not a necessary step. For me, it helps me keep in line with my die. So we have a little bit of time here while I'm adding the die. 
And I just want to remind you guys that I do have a link for my Facebook group down below in the description box. Um, it's tie dye, belladonna dyes. And you guys are more than welcome to share your projects with me. I would love to see what you guys are doing. So if you have Facebook, um, you know, please share with me. I also do have Instagram and TikTok. I don't get on those platforms very often, but I do from time to time. So yeah, share what you're doing with me. I would love to see your projects. So once you get all the dye on your shirt, the next step is going to be sprinkling on a little bit of soda ash for good measure and then packing on the ice. Now the shirt has already been soaked in soda ash, but I've gone through all this trouble to get to this point. So I don't want to risk it. We want to keep the pH of that shirt up around 10.5 to 11. We're still having a nice heat wave here in Oregon, so I put one of these little foil pans that I got at the dollar store over the top of the bowl just to protect it from any debris or like a squirrel jumping in it and I set it outdoors and once the ice melts you want to batch it for 24 hours. It's been 24 hours since the ice is melted and now it's time for the rinse out. You want to start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers and then gradually increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do a plain hot water cycle. I'm washing many things at one time. I need all of that loose dye to come off of the shirts. And then I do a second hot water cycle using Kirillon, which is basically Synthropol. And I do have links for everything down below in the description box. And then I do a third hot water cycle using Millsoft, which brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And I do this every single time for every single thing I make, unless I specify otherwise. So since we're still in the washout phase, I wanted to take some really close up shots. The question has been brought up uh, about pilling. I have not experienced pilling uh, well, I did that one time with the little crop top sweatshirt, but that was because the thing is garbage. But um, I took several shots because I don't want it to be deemed as, oh, I'm just picking out the good spot of the shirt. Um, you know, if you consider this pilling, then yes, I have a little bit of pilling. I mean, there are a couple spots here and there, but that's it. I have no issue with pilling or damaging the shirts. They're very vibrant. They're, you know, when it goes on to the next person, they can just immediately throw it into their washing machine and they're not going to have any issue with it ruining their regular clothes. And I think that's really important, you guys. So this is how I learned to do the rinse out and I'm not going to change it. Well, here it is, guys. Here's our muck dye spiral after it's been washed and dried. And I think it turned out fantastic. I rarely, if ever, use these colors, and so it was fun to do for fall. The pomegranate really does look like a pomegranate, and the pagoda red is, um, it's orange. It's not really red at all, but maybe, maybe it's supposed to be, but it's a beautiful burnt orange. And the Dutch chocolate is beautiful, like coffee and chocolate. And then the Muir green is just a really nice dark forest green. So I really love this shirt. And I love the muck lines, you know, the contrast that it creates. Um, overall, I'm very pleased with this shirt. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. 
Please support the channel by subscribing, leaving a thumbs up, and then clicking the bell and setting it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.